Hello Prodigy Campers, this is the Prodigy Tutor Theo Peters coming at you all the way from Alberta, Canada with some hints for multiplying. Now before we get started, uh, there's something you can do that's going to help this make a lot more sense to you. Uh, I'm going to want you to collect 30 objects for me, just little things that we can put into groups that you do this multiplying. Could be coins, cubes, Cheerios, Hatchimals, little figures. Anything that you can kind of get in a group on the table in front of you and put into groups. So nothing big, no elephants, no sports cars, something kind of smaller and easier to work with. So pause the video, go and find yourself 30 objects and come back on here when you're ready. Wow, that didn't take you long at all. Let's jump in. The first thing to understand about multiplication is that it's all about groups. So if someone asks you what three times three is, what they're really asking is, if I have three groups with three things in each group, how much do I have? So three times three, three groups of three. So we're gonna go through the numbers zero to 10, not in order, but uh, in maybe a more helpful multiplication order, and look at some tips for how to multiply these numbers. Okay, we're gonna start with the zeros. So if I have zero times something, means I have zero groups of something or zero in a group. So I dare you, try to make zero groups of five with your objects. Can't do it, how do you make a zero group of five? Uh, and now try and make three groups with nothing in them. Yeah, there's just nothing. So anything times zero is zero because it means there's nothing in a group or no groups. Now multiplying by ones is almost as easy as multiplying by zeros. One means you've got one group or one in each group. So go ahead, make eight groups of one. How many in total? You're right, eight. We're counting by ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now make one group of six. Well, you just got those six in that group to count up. So multiplying by one is just the same as counting by ones and we've done that forever. So whatever number you multiply by one, that's the number you still have. So eight times one is eight, and one times six is six. Pretty simple stuff. Now multiplying by two means you have two groups of something or two in each group. So why don't you make two groups of six with your objects you've got there? What do you get? 12. Looks like you've got two sixes. One six, second six. It's the same as doubling. 2 times 6, or 6 times 2, is the same as 6 plus 6. You've got two sixes. 6 plus 6 is 12. We know our doubles. 6 plus 6 is 12. Easy peasy. Now let's make three groups of 6. It's kind of like skip counting by 2 three times. 2, 4, 6. And since 3 times 2 and 2 times 3 are the same thing, we can do that double thing again. You can see that my 2 times 3 here looks the same as two groups of three. Three plus three is six, boom. When we multiply by two, it's the same as doubling something. So two times two is four, three times two is six, 10 times two is 20. We just double that number, super easy. Multiplying by four means you've got four groups or four in a group. Now, yes, I know we're skipping threes for now. We'll come back there because we want to build on our twos knowledge to help us with our fours. So remember that two times two is four, two groups of two is four, two plus two, two doubled is four. Well, just check quick if you don't believe me, use your objects there. But that means that multiplying by four is the same as multiplying by two twice. Remember multiplying by two, we could just double the number. So now we're gonna double it twice. Well, let's make four groups of five. Use your objects, make four groups of five. So let's see here, I got my first five, I'm gonna double that and that gives me 10. I'm gonna double that again, that gives me 20. So four times five is 20. If we counted all of our objects, we'd see there's 20 of them there. So we can double that five twice. Five to 10, double again, 10 to 20. What about three groups of four? Well, use your objects, go ahead and make that. Okay, it's 12. Let's double three twice. Three plus three is six, easy. Six plus six is 12. Whoa, same thing again. So when we multiply by four, we're actually doubling it twice. And you can see with your object, you can kind of see how you've got one line, then there's two lines, and there's two more lines, so it's doubling twice. Easy peasy. Multiplying by eight means you have eight groups of something or eight in a group. 
Now, why are we jumping from four to eight? Just skipped a bunch of numbers there, Theo. What are you doing? Well, it's all gonna make sense. Remember that two times two is four? Well, if we multiply that by one more two, that gets eight. So for twos, we double once. For fours, we double twice. For eights, we can double it three times. Let's check. Take your objects and make eight times three for me. So eight rows of three. It's a pretty big number, but it's gonna show our point here. So let's double three one time. Okay, three plus three, six, easy. Let's double that again. Six plus six, 12. So far, so good. 12 plus 12 is 24. That's our third time doubling. So eight times three is 24. Let's count up our objects. 24 as well. So we can double a number three times. That's the same as multiplying it by eight. Well, let's try something else. What if we had two groups of eight? Well, we could use our do thing and just double eight once to get 16. Let's practice our eights one. Okay, let's double two three times. Okay, two plus two, four. Four plus four, eight. Eight plus eight, 16. Wow, works like a charm. So multiplying by eight is the same as doubling something three times. There's another great strategy for you for multiplying numbers. Okay, we're gonna take a step back and catch those ones we've missed so far. So we're gonna go back to our threes. Multiplying by threes means you have three groups or three in a group. Now, threes are fun to work with, but there aren't as many easy tricks to use for them. I do have one on my sleeve, however. Let's make three groups of five with your objects. What if we doubled five? Well, that would give us 10. And since we have three groups, we need one more group of five over that 10. That's 15. So we multiply by three, we double the number, and then add one more of that number. So five doubled is 10, plus one more five is 15. Hmm. Let's try seven groups of three. Oh, that one looks a little bit weird, but I bet we can still handle it, okay? So if we kind of look at these as uh, three times seven, because actually seven times three and three times seven look the same, uh, we can double seven once, that's 14, add one more seven, 21. Our picture matches up with what we're talking about. That's amazing. So for threes, we double and add one more group. Now you'll be a king or queen of multiplying threes. When we first learn skip counting, we learn how to skip count by twos, fives, and tens. That means that multiplying by five is actually pretty easy because we're just skip counting. So multiplying by five means we have five groups or five in a group. So if I was gonna skip count by five, I could do those things really quick. And we also know that anything we skip count by five is gonna be five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Always gonna have a five or a zero in that one spot. Well, let's try one here, okay? So what about five times two? Okay, well, let's skip count by five twice. Five, 10, boom, five times two is 10. What if we did five groups of five, five times five? Well, try again, five, 10, 15, 20, 25. And 25 has a five in the ones column. So again, we're getting it. So multiplying by five, skip counting by five, super easy. Even easier than multiplying by five is multiplying by 10, because now we're skip counting by tens. So multiplying by 10 means you've got 10 groups or 10 in a group. So you just skip count 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, whatever we're getting to. So 10 times two, we'll use your objects and build that one. That would be 20, 10, 20. We're both three times 10. We're gonna use all our objects for this one. 10, 20, 30. Perfect, and use your objects. Make those things, make it easy to learn. If you gotta pause the video to do so, please do it. Multiplying by nine means you have nine groups or nine in a group. Now nine is kind of a strange number to work with. We're gonna borrow from the three strategy to help us here. So the threes, we would double a number and add one more group. Now we're gonna actually multiply by 10 and take one group away. For example, nine times two. Kind of tough, we could build our objects and count them up, but to get quicker than that, let's try doing 10 times two. Well, 10 times two is 10, 20. Super easy, but I only want nine groups of two. So I'm gonna take one of those groups of two away. 20 minus two is 18. Awesome. What if we did three times nine? Again, a little bit tough to work with. There's no easy doubling or anything. But if I did three times 10, 10, 20, 30, nice. 
Then I take one of those groups of three away, because I only need nine, I don't need the full 10. Well, 30 minus three is 27, so there you go. When you multiply by nines, you multiply by 10 and just take one of those groups away. Could it be any easier? Multiplying by six means you have six groups or six in a group. Multiplying by seven means you have seven groups or seven in a group. Now, six and sevens are some of the trickiest numbers to multiply. I know most kids have a little bit of trouble in this area, but usually they're being multiplied by another number we've talked about. If you look at this multiplication chart here, you can see that for all these white spaces, we can use another strategy. So if I was doing two times seven, I'm worried about sevens, I can just double seven with a two. Things like that. The only ones I really have a trouble with are right in this middle spot here, where I've got six times six, seven times seven, six times seven, which is the same as seven times six. So these are kind of these three, four ones that we kind of just work extra hard to memorize. So I'd encourage you to practice these ones. Um, and I'm sure after a little while, they'll stick in your head really easy. So six times six is 36, seven times seven is 49, and seven times six, same as six times seven, is 42. Look at you, campers. You're like math multiplying machines. I hope this video has given you some new strategies or helped you review some you already knew. Now get out there and grapple with those gobs of groups.